Hello everyone, today I'm working on this uh, BL2. So I got this from eBay and it's far from being in great shape. Although uh, cosmetically it's pretty good. The, uh, the coupler broke off there uh, during shipping. But that's okay, I know how to fix that. And these, I do use them with the original Rapido, Rapidos. That's fine by me. So uh, this one was advertised that as not running. I tested it before and it is uh, not running. But we'll just have a look at the shell there. The shell, everything is good. I got the two horns. I got all the handrails. And the paint looks great. So I don't have to do anything. Oh, there's a little ladder missing. Other than that, though, I don't have to do anything to it. And you can see somebody uh, played with the wiring. The wiring is a mess. There's no insulation here even. So that has to be redone. So we're going to convert this to DCC and sound today. I sure hope there's enough room for the decoder on top of the motor. Actually, let's test this out right now. So you can convert any engine to DCC and sound. I'm going to show you how. Anyways, this is an XL Systems uh, decoder. Comes with the speaker already on there. This is good because if you were to get an expensive ESU or soundtracks, they would not have the speaker included. You have to buy an extra speaker. So let me just get the uh, proper instruction sheet for that and I'll be right back. This is a decoder for a GP38. So it goes into a lot of different engines. I put them in B23 7s, well, GP38, GP40, uh, SD35, I put them in uh, C420. So they go into a lot of different engines. And uh, today it's going to go into the BL2 if there's enough room for it. But I think it's going to work because it's pretty thin. If you look at it, it's pretty thin. So there's a good chance it's going to go. And the BL2 is kind of wide. You know, uh, soundtracks, they make really good decoders. But they, um, I might have to remove this uh, light piping which is good because I need it for another engine. So the, it looks like it's going to fit, probably. I might have to take a little bit of that weight off. Let me just remove that lead, uh, that light piping there, and then we'll see uh, how close I can make it. I've got quite a bit of uh, lead piping left over to use uh, for another BL2. But for the rear headlight, I use basically just the lens. And then for the front one, I only use uh, the piping till I'm up to the, uh, the, basically just past the front window. And then the decoder fits snugly in there. Let's see if I can get it um, up over the motor. That's pretty important. Yes, when I saw this for sale on eBay, I said to myself, somebody tried to convert this to DCC or something. All these wires, it's a complete mess. So to make sure um, everything fits there, I'm going to just remove the weights. And then you can see here, so this wire, some of these wires are disconnected. So there's no way, there's the wire that's, no way this would run. So I have to redo all the wiring. Oh, one of the springs is missing. Look at that. One of the springs is missing. You replace it with a little piece of cardboard, which is, I guess it was okay. I guess that wouldn't stop it from running. Just doesn't look uh, very professional. It's okay. I've got um, parts units for this, so I can get a spring from that. Never noticed that when I bought it. Um, Okay, everything else seems to be in place. I'm going to flatten out the wires because I want to know if the decoder will fit under the shell. When you put the, uh, the drive in there, you have to be careful. There's a little bar there. Put your, uh, your 
a couple bucket under there and then I got all this mess of wires which is uh, completely bad it looks like I'm just gonna tear everything out but it's gonna fit under there I'm gonna put uh, less wiring when I do it that's gonna fit perfect so we can move on to the next step which is gonna be um, cleaning the uh, cleaning the wheels lubricating everything uh, it's gonna be removing all these wires and removing everything so enough talking let's get to work while i'm working on the wheels um sometimes you'll see you get these and they're running poorly they have poor electrical pickup so often it's um these little tabs here right here are desoldered from the wire which is the case here so as i go around cleaning this i'll be making sure to manage this since i got to redo um, all the wiring anyway i'm going to uh, allow myself to cut all these wires here you can see the insulation is melted here so that is no no bueno we're going to redo all the wiring for the whole engine so maybe this is useful to you you have one of these and it's completely messed up so you need to redo the wiring so we're going to do that at the same time so i'm going to cut um, this yellow wire i don't know maybe i should keep it just a little bit longer so it can be reused it's not very important because i've got i've got a lot of electrical wire so i can replace this and that's what it's looking uh, like it's going to be so then once your um, little power truck is free from the wiring you can just drop it which will make it way easier to repair so you just push on the pin here and that will release the truck oh that looks very dirty so I'll just let that uh, drop down and I'm going to be um, rewiring everything before I put it back together. So with the, uh, with the truck off from the engine, it makes everything way easier. Well, I'll tell you my first impressions. This is a, a pre pretty good shape. It's a good roller. So in order to remove the uh, side frames, you just press them up. It's a lot easier to do that with the wires disconnected. And then, am I going to uh, disassemble this to clean this? Maybe, maybe not, because it seems to be good, as far as I can tell. I took a minute to look at it under magnification. There's a lot of scenery foam in there, so that's going to make it worthwhile to uh, take it apart. So, I will. So, you just pry under uh, the wheels like this. And your wheels will come out these gear they're a dark blue color so i'm hoping that i can clean it up and make the blue uh, stand out because i i like uh, working on these small engines and looking at all the gears you know the motor has a, a green paint a gray green paint which i find very um, i don't know why they do that but I find that color very uh, nice. So I like looking at that. So you can just spread this out like that. You can see there's a little bit of hair on there. So definitely worth uh, taking that apart. So the gears, I'll uh, wash them with my toothbrush and some dish soap. And then this contact strip, I should be able to remove that without causing too much trouble to the rest. Let's find out. It's sort of kind of melted in there, so I'm not going to remove it. Uh, these, I'll just clean them with my fingers. But I will run the whole uh, gear case, the whole gearbox, I'm going to run it. Uh, there's another O-ring made out of hair. 
I'm gonna run the whole gearbox uh, under uh, my tap so this is okay you can take a little bit of water and then this wire is not hanging on by much it wasn't soldered in as a matter of fact the guy just spun it around which I guess he didn't have a soldering iron so you gotta do what you gotta do so I'm gonna clean everything with uh, my toothbrush and some dish soap and I've got two little idlers here which are also uh, dark blue so I'm hoping to bring the color back that would be really neat yeah so this is a little bit messed up too so we're going to be um, cleaning everything thoroughly and then putting it back together look at that the blue color came back and then these little gears here this one is a dark 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 blue and this one is a lighter uh, blue color so uh, that's really neat and then I'm going to uh, clean all the uh, the wheels the wheels you can or you can uh, omit you can do it or not do it clean them under uh, your ta your toothbrush and some dish soap but for today i think just the rag is going to be good all right three more to go i almost forgot uh, while i have the side frames in my hands there we're going to repair um, this coupler here Actually, it doesn't look broken. It looks like it just fell off. Well, that's really neat. Look at that. Oh, I should have been more careful. It, uh, it just fell off. Okay. Um, this is up. And the coupler has a little pin here. This little pin uh, indicates down, so that should just go in there. I thought I was going to use my own parts to fix this, but I won't need to. So that just fell off. We'll just remove the little door. There's a little door that keeps it in. So we'll remove that. Easy breezy Japanesey although these are probably made in hong kong yeah how do you guys like these this old uh, old style uh, lifelike i think they're okay i mean this would be the best time to put some uh, put some micro trains or some fake knuckle couplers in there i'm good with running it uh, with just a uh, TCC but horn hook coupler, um, rapido couplers. Remember your first train set with the horn hooks? NHO. Well, I'm going to be careful not to break everything. But that's starting to look good. So I've got a bunch of uh, red and black wire and uh, you don't necessarily need to use a specific color for this but since I have um, all the wires black and red I'm going to use um, just a standard convention so for DCC uh, this side of the track is bl a black wire and this side of the track is a red wire it doesn't really matter to how the engine function it's just because um, i'm interested in the nmra uh, dcc what what's conventional and what's the the proper way to do it i do it like that so I, i've got these wires here that are there just for my enjoyment so i will use them for uh, for resoldering rewiring this engine but that is more of a guideline 
than an actual necessity. You guys can do what you like. There. I will always pre-thin my wires before I do anything. Just waiting for my iron to get hot. So absolutely, I always pre-thin my wires. That speeds up the process tremendously. It's a good practice. So this is tricky because you want to um, you want to get it hot enough to melt the solder but not too hot because you do not want to melt the uh, you don't want to melt the plastic so it's really tricky and of course I want it to look neat so spend the extra time to get it just right and then check it for strength now I'm ready to put everything back together uh, I'm gonna use this side to start because it has the two little post for the two little gears and I am gonna lubricate it the bell uh, 108 is what I like to use. So you don't need a lot of lubrication, just a drop. So I lubricate these as I put them back together. And you don't need much. So I'll start with the little gears. They have a little... Um, let me get this to focus a little bit. They have just a little um, round, round uh, top on one side. So this side, um, this side goes towards the gearbox, towards the pin, and that will line them up properly. It's nice to have everything clean. Everything's so nice and blue now. That goes back together like that, and we'll put the axles back. If you're able to remove the um, the gearbox uh, from the frame like that, it makes it really easy. Usually I have to do this uh, in the frame. It's not impossible to do it. Oh yeah, I'm going to also lubricate this side. There's just two places to lubricate. Really easy. And then get that goes back with that. So this is a nice engine. It's kind of simple to work on. Just a few gears and uh, pretty basic. But um, it runs. Runs okay. Can't complete. I uh, can't complain. So these they need a little spring action, but not too much. So you can adjust them at this point. And then we'll bring in the wheels. The Bell 108 does conduct electricity, so if you get some uh, on the contacts, it's not bad. Now I am gonna put the um, I am gonna put the big gear back on just so I can test everything just to make sure I'm happy. So this I'll polish this as much as I can with my fingers. It's still a little bit dirty, but I guess that's the way it's gonna go. So that put just a little bit of oil on that. I put its gear on so the gear gets most of the oil rather than the case. But that that rolls good. So we'll just put that back temporarily. Just so I can test uh, just so I can test everything out. But it feel everything's feeling good so far. I'm not gonna put it back on the frame. 
yeah everything feels real good so that should be a good runner when I'm done perfect we'll put the uh, we'll put the side frames on Just making sure I got it the right direction there put the side frames back on I'm doing it that way because I don't want to interfere with my wires make sure uh, it's on uh, the correct uh, orientation because I've put them on wrong before so that everything feels good so that a uh, wheel set is done I'll do the exact same thing on the other side and I remembered what I wanted to do with these I'm gonna reuse them to wire my motor back I'm gonna just uh, resolder everything here but I'm gonna use these wires I'm gonna recycle them to, re to uh, reuse the motor so I'm just gonna cut everything and uh, recycle them for the motor already looks much cleaner that makes much more sense to me it's a lot easier to work on it like that okay i've got my two uh, trucks sorted out now i'm gonna rewire uh, the motor now the motor leads they should be um, orange and gray but i'm gonna reuse uh, this yellow wire here for that but it should be uh, orange and gray i'm gonna remove the motor completely uh, from the uh, from the it's a frame here and how I'm gonna do it uh, you just pull it out but I'm gonna put a mark on it just so I know which way uh, which way it was up just put a little mark on there just so I know when I put it back now I use the fuel tank to know uh, which way was the front so the lowest part of the fuel tank here is gonna be the front and all you gotta do is pull up basically but well i'll remove these uh the spring here remove the spring just so i have uh remove this piece of wood or cardboard whatever it was just so i can pull up now usually you're not able to do this because everything's wired together okay, if you want to remove the fuel tank there's a screw there and um, I am going to lubricate this since I have it in my hands, although it seems to be really good. All you have to do is put just one drop of oil in the end of the little shaft. We're going to use gravity and capillarity to get it there. So just one little drop of oil and then you use the, uh, the shaft thrust motion to uh, bring the oil in and I'm gonna run it on the bench a little bit with uh, with the oil in just to make sure that uh, it gets in there but there's no reason uh, to suspect problems with this motor sounds like a good runner oh yeah it's a good runner so I'm gonna rewire everything I'm gonna clean up these strips now, if I was being a good boy, I would take them off the engine before I, uh, I solder them. In fact, I'm going to solder them like that. Because if this part gets too hot, it will melt the plastic. And you won't be able to hold your uh, brushes. Also, um, this would be a good time to change your brushes. For sure, for sure. So, I'm going to use my solder again just to clean all this up at first. And then I'll pre-tin uh, my yellow wires, and then I'll, I'll solder them in. I'm trying to make uh, this solder as neat as possible, because it's cramped under there. I want to have as little wire as possible. I want it to look neat. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to remove the two worm gears I'm going to wash them and re-lubricate them. So these are stuck in there pretty hard. 
Now, uh, with springing the offering, I have to do a little bit more work uh, on my cars. You know, switch out the tires, do oil changes. So um, that takes away from my train time. So this uh, this build is going to be in two parts. Actually, it's going to take me two weeks to complete it. So uh, I'm going to uh, lubricate these two worm gears. All my wiring is done. All my trucks are ready to go. My motor is wired. The only thing that's going to be left to do for next week is to wire in the decoder. So uh, I'm going to clean this up and we'll leave it at that for this week. So we'll do uh, part two uh, next week. So I hope you enjoyed the video. See you soon. soon.